Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In our previous video, we have already seen how Kotlin Flow came into the picture. Along with that, also we have seen how we can uh, produce and consume the data stream with the help of Kotlin Flow without blocking the main thread. So the first point, asynchronous data stream has been covered in our previous uh, video and we have seen each and everything with the help of demonstration already. So when we talk about the data stream, the three entities uh, come into the picture, which is consumer, uh, producer and intermediary. So uh, this producer can produce the stream of data and that stream of data will get delivered to the consumer via intermediary. This intermediary is having a capability to modify the data which is coming from the producer. Consider a case if some data is coming from the producer and that data stream doesn't need any kind of modification, then in that cases, this intermediary layer will be the optional one. Now consider a case that you want to create your own application using MVVM design pattern. So in that case, your repository will act as a producer because whatever response is coming from the server in the form of data stream, that will eventually get delivered to the view, which will act as a consumer. And when we see the second side of it, for example, on the view, if I'm doing or if I'm performing some kind of click operation or if I'm cre creating or generating some kind of event, then that UI will act as a producer. And if that request is going to the view model or to the repository, then that view model and repository will act as a consumer. So to put this in perspective, let's see uh, the example. Okay. So this is the previous example, which we have seen already in the previous video of this series. So inside this, we are having one fake repository where we are generating a new number every two seconds. And this new number, whatever new number is getting generated, that will get populated on the UI on your right side. You can see hello 10. So this is the final number which has been generated by this fake repository. So, uh, here fake repository is acting as a producer and this activity or i can say view is acting as a consumer so he, this is the place where we are consuming that value okay so i can see that this is uh, this fake repository is printing value one and then after two seconds it will print two and then after two seconds again it will print three and it will print till 10 but my requirement is that whatever number is coming say one then that number should get doubled so it will be one into one and then if it is two then two into two if it is three then i have to print three into three nine so if in case of 10 it should show 10 into 10 which is equal to 100 so for that we have to use the intermediate operator and here i can use dot map operator for this where i can directly write it into it let's see the behavior of the application okay so now you can see number is getting doubled every second three four into four 16 five into five 25 six into six 36 seven into seven 49 18 to eight 64 and so on so this is acting like an intermediary operator so whatever number is coming from the producer we are doing some kind of modification and then we are sending it to the consumer which is our main activity so with that, uh, we are now having pretty good understanding of Kotlin flow. And also with the example, we have just seen how this uh, flow will get fit in inside different design pattern like MVVM. Now looking over this image, I can see the flow is always pointing from producer to consumer. One may think that why it is not, uh, why the arrow is not pointing from consumer to producer. So to answer this question, I will say Kotlin flow always follow the reactive programming approach but what does that mean let's try to understand this with the help of example okay so this is our friend pancho so pancho job is to wake up early morning and go to this lake and bring water from this lake to his home so pancho do that he wake up early morning he goes to this lake and he put the water in the bucket and bring that water to his home but when the season are dry and in dry season, the lake is also dry. So in dry season, when Pancho go to this lake, he find that lake is dry. So he don't get water and he come back empty hand to his home. So one day he realized that 
in the case of uh, dry season, the Pancho is losing the energy, losing the effort. He's going on the lake and he's coming back empty hand. So one day he realized that he will install the water pipe to his home. So whenever there will be a water inside the lake, the water will get delivered to his home. So here there is two cases. So in first case, Pancho is going to lake to bring the water daily. And in the second case, Pancho is staying at home. And as he has installed the pipe, he has to just check on the tap whether water is coming or not. So this kind of programming is called imperative programming approach. And this kind of programming is called a reactive programming approach. Okay. And flow follow the reactive programming approach. To put this in another perspective and how it will fit in inside the programming world, let's see the another slide. This is our first use case where Pancho was going to the lake to bring the water. So let's see how it will fit in inside our Android code architecture. So from view, some request will get generated and then it will go to the view model. View model will pass that request to the data layer. Data layer will hit the server or we can say uh, this is the lake and then the response will be delivered to the data layer from the server and that response will be given to the view model and then finally the response will reach to the view which will get populated on the ui and here in our example case uh, the data will reach to pancho home so again if there will be any data again we have to check whether new data has came yes then please deliver it to me if data has came deliver it to me every morning like pancho was checking we have to check this whether data new data has been arrived if yes deliver that data so what what is the drawback of this in this uh, periodically we have to check whether data has been changed on server if yes then change the data on the ui so this kind of approach is called imperative approach which can be achieved with the help of exposing a suspend function with the help of normal coroutines so what in case if i want to reflect the data on its own i don't want pancho to go to the server or to the lake all every time to check whether new data has been arrived so to deal with that reactive programming comes into the picture this is the second case where pancho has installed the pipe to his home and whenever there will be a water in, inside the lake the pancho will receive the water at his home in the similar way if there will be any changes in the data stream that will get delivered through this pipe to the view now this reactive programming work on the basis of observer pattern so those who have subscribed it they will receive the changes so we can see that each layer like view is observing the view model view model is observing the data layer and data layer is observing the source so whenever there will be any changes inside the data that will get transferred through this pipe to the view because it work on the observer pattern and in our case we can achieve this reactive programming with the help of exposing the flow in the second image we can clearly see uh, there is two data sources which are emitting value to the repository and eventually that data is getting delivered to our friend pancho or in other word it is getting delivered to the view now as we know we are using flow and flow work on observer pattern so this activity is observing to this repository in the similar way repository is observing to the data sources so if there will be any changes inside the data sources that will be notified to the repository and therefore if there will be any changes inside the repository that will get that will notify to our activity or fragment or in other word composables or view so to conclude flow follow the reactive approach using the observer pattern as soon as there will be changes inside the data source that will get reflected to the ui and ui or activity will observe the repository and repository will observe the data sources so when there will be any changes that will get notified to the subscriber so with that now we are having pretty good understanding of reactive programming and also we have seen how reactive approach work with kotlin flows in our next video we will see flow in action till the time stay tuned on my channel and please do not forget to like and subscribe my channel thank you so much